Oh. Now there's a trick to this pruning. Walk in your own backyard and find almost everything you'll need to make a wreath. Sue Thomas is the only person allowed to cut in her backyard, the Hoyt Arboretum. Get in there and find a bushy lower branch to cut. Snip it snug to the tree. Create a, a good wound that the tree can heal. So that's easily. actually helping. It is helping, yeah. Cut the branchlets off, enough to fill a bucket. Salal looks great in wreaths too. What it does is promote good growth next spring. That's all it takes to make these great wreaths, or you can always buy them from the Hoyt Arboretum. Looks like this one should be left behind. Working clockwise, start adding what you've gathered with single sprigs or clumps of three pieces together. Like a piece of juniper and this mugo pine and a piece of um, giant sequoia and stick it on together. I'll wrap three times around because that makes it sturdy as I go. Wire it on piece by piece. The longest pieces measured from thumb to pinky go around the outside. Measure shorter pieces from knuckle to knuckle about three inches long for the inside of the wreath. Look, she got a backup. You notice Sue is using some tools. You can get them all at the craft store. A ring looks like a railroad track, some 24 gauge paddle wire and some clippers. Other than that, all you need is your imagination. Just tuck in a piece, wired in place over and over, round and round. How do we finish this off at the end anyway? You know, there's still ring showing way back under here. And unless I work that down underneath, it will look like there's a hole between where I started and where I ended. Okay. So I just keep pushing it back. It'll be snug at the end of the circle. My advice about wreath making, start small, but think big.